Borgard from Macquarie University and I would like to speak about some collaborative work with Jeff Borgard and Zoltan Zimboros. And the title of the talk is Quantum Distance to Uncontrollability and Quantum Speed Limits. So let me introduce first controllability. So imagine you have some Hamiltonian with a time-independent drift component and a time-dependent control component on some finite dimensional Hilbert space, let's say of dimension D. Controllability then means that for any unitary evolution on the full system, I can find a choice of these control functions, which could be laser pulses or microwave pulses, such that that unitary is reached. So roughly speaking, it means that the mapping between the pulses and the unitary time evolution operators, which are the solution of the Schrodinger equation, is subjective. So all of these unitaries can be reached at some time t. Now, for the purpose of this talk, I'm interested in the quantum speed limit which is the smallest such time at which is this the case. Okay, so obviously in general if your controls are somehow limited then you need some non-trivial evolution of the drift in order to reach the unitaries. Think about uh, sigma z here and some control sigma x. So in order to get something in the direction of sigma y, you need some non-trivial time. And this time I call the quantum speed limit. There are other cases of quantum speed limits that people consider in the literature, but this is the one that I'm interested in in this talk. Now there's an old result by Seth Lloyd, which states that almost all systems Are controllable and what this means is that if you say fix HC and you look at the space of all possible H zeros that you choose from then if you pick one randomly the system will be controllable so almost everything in here will be controllable there can be points at which the evolution is not controllable. For example, if you choose H0 equal to zero, then of course, if you integrate the Schrodinger equation, you'll just get a, a trivial direction of evolution in the direction of HC. So this will be an uncontrollable point, and there can be more than one, there can be many, but they will always have, uh, roughly speaking, zero measure. So you can also have more complicated manifolds, which are uncontrollable. So all of these systems are uncontrollable, but, um, but they are rare, they are somehow rare. Now we argue in this result that there is a flip side and that this um, picture here doesn't explain the full story yet. And the reason is that not all controllable systems are born equal. So for instance, say you have um, this system here A and you have another system B, then we, we, we would argue that A is somehow a better system to use um, compared to B. And the reason is that A is further away from the nearest uncontrollable system. So we have a, a distance to uncontrollability, which for the B system is fairly small and for the A system it's bigger. So it's somehow more robust. And uh, this concept of distance to uncontrollability has been considered in the classical case. And Jeff has worked a lot on this. Uh, but in, in this paper here, which is also on the archive, we look at the quantum version of it. So more precisely, we look at the smallest perturbation
which makes the modified system, the perturbed system, uncontrollable. This is how we define the distance to uncontrollability. Now, um, obviously, this distance is smaller or equal to h0 because I can always choose my perturbation so that it completely removes this h0 component and thereby makes the system uncontrollable. But uh, in many systems we find that there are smaller perturbations which also make the system uncontrollable. So what implication does this um, quantity epsilon here, this distance to uncontrollability have? We show in the paper that it has an implication on the quantum speed limit. And why is that? So this bounds the quantum speed limit. And the reason is that nature needs time to distinguish a controllable from an uncontrollable system. So if you consider, for example, our controllable system given by h0 plus f of t hc and you consider a modification let's call it k of t which is given by the uncontrollable system h0 plus delta h0 plus f of t hc so this is controllable this is uncontrollable then if you start evolving with either of those two systems, nature needs time to distinguish. And you can make this more precise by looking at the, the solution of the Schrodinger equation. So you take the solution of the Schrodinger equation for the controllable system, let's say like this, and you take the solution V of T of the uncontrollable system like this, so these are the corresponding time evolution operators. And there's a fairly old bound by Nielsen, which is very easy to show, which basically says that if I compare now the time evolution operator at some fixed time capital T of the controllable system and the uncontrollable system, I can bound this by the integral over the distance of the two Hamiltonians, so k of t minus h of t, over the time from 0 to t. Now, of course, the way I've defined this here for the specific system is that when you subtract the two from each other, the time dependent of the control pulse cancels out, h0 cancels out, so this is smaller or equal, or it's actually equal to t times delta h and so if you choose the smallest one um, this gives you t epsilon if you take the distance to uncontrollability on the other hand on the left side because the the system that corresponds to u is controllable at time capital t by assumption we can make this unitary arbitrary. On the other hand, this system here is uh, restricted and an element of something, some set of, of unitaries which we can reach for this perturbed system here, which is a priori unknown, it's often called the reachable set. Now we study in this paper the reachable set of these systems and we define a fairly complicated quantity which we call delta star. So maybe I'll, I'll tell you a little story how to, how to define this delta star before I write down the definition. So imagine that you go shopping and you want to buy a quantum computer and um, unfortunately all the universal quantum computers of a fixed dimension have sold out. 
And so you have to buy a non-universal one, one which has a restricted possible set of unitaries. And you want to find the best out of these machines. Let's say you have arbitrary choice amongst the non-universal machines and you want to find the best one. So you, you go home with, with the machine that you bought and then you try to find the worst possible unitary, that is the unitary at which this machine is, is not good at approximating it. And um, you want to, to have a bound on that. So we want to know what is the best, what's, what's, the, what's the best possible scenario you can have here. So let me write down the, the definition more precisely. So you, you take the distance and this is the best approximation for a specific machine characterized by what you can do with this machine with R. But now you find the hardest possible unitary that you can run on this particular machine. So you, you have a, like, um, that's the worst possible unitary. Um, and now you want to buy the best possible machine. So you take the infimum over all machines which are non-universal. And to go one step further, this is for a fixed dimension, but we actually look at the smallest possible of this for arbitrary dimension. And this is actually the quantity that we bound. It's a fairly uh, complicated geometric quantity, um, but we can prove that actually independently of, this, uh, of the dimension of the system, this is always gonna be larger than one quarter. So in some sense, as you increase the dimension of your system, it's not necessarily true that you can approximate uh, the unitaries better and better. And so if you, if you use this result here to, to choose the, the worst possible um, unitary here, you can, you can remove the dependence on what you can do on the particular reachable uh, system here, and you can get a speed limit, and that is the central result of the paper, that the speed limit is larger equal um, to one over four times epsilon. Okay, so in the paper we look at uh, several examples um, of this. So we we look at a particular um, system that is kind of a, a toy system, you might say. It's a gold standard in, in speed limits. So this is one example where you have a band matrix with off-diagonal elements of this form and you have a control that sits in the top left corner. And the reason we choose this uh, particular system is that uh, it's been well studied both numerically and analytically. And we can prove a speed limit, let's say t larger equal to square root of 2 d squared over 3 pi squared, where this is um, d squared is the dimension on, of the system as before. So the dimension of the Hilbert space is equal to d. So I think this is the first time that um, one could prove an analytical bound on the on the speed limit here scaling quadratically with the dimension. Roughly speaking, in this kind of nearest neighbor model, you would expect by leap robinson arguments that the control time scales at least linearly um, with, with the dimension, but um, the quadratic dependence is something that we observed numerically and it um, seems to be fairly tight. Now we don't claim that this particular limit is, is always going to be tight. I, I think it's probably quite far from tight in general. But we look at uh, some other interesting examples uh, in the paper. For example, we uh, look at um, some um, weak unharmonicity. And we look at the system with spectral crowding. And so those are concept, concepts in, in, let's say, experimental quantum information, which are fairly uh, well known that uh, if, if you have a, a system which is only weakly unharmonic or which if you have a system with, which suffers from spectral crowding, 
then that has implications on the time that it takes to control the system. Um, and, and this uh, distance to uncontrollability makes this somehow quantitative. And so we argue that because this distance to uncontrollability is something that can be computed, um, it should be taken into account when you design a system. So this is perhaps the takeaway message. When you design a system, if possible, choose a large distance to uncontrollability. And that will mean that your quantum speed limit um, might be a little bit better and it kind of gives you a robustness. So for anything else, I'll have to refer you to the paper in the interest of time, or you can ask me in the Q&A session, um, which I guess takes place next week. Thank you very much for your attention.